Okay, we've spotted a nice fish just in here at last. I cleared this nice little bank here. This was completely overgrown with willows and blackberry and what have you. It's even starting to sprout up again already, as you can see. Haven't been able to get a fish from here until now. Well, hopefully we can get one now, but we've spotted a beauty just, just in there somewhere. I can't actually see him from here. The camera will pick up that fly as it floats down and over the fish, and we can see the fish come up and take. Oh, I think, I think I've got a visual on that fish. Oh, yep, I can see that fish. So you just have the camera pointed down there and try and see, hopefully you can see this fly. Uh, where is he? There he is, you ready? I'm going to start casting. Good cast. There he goes. Woohoo! Great cast. That was beautiful tight. Did you see that fish just come up and... Oh, I love that. Oh, I've caught. Oh, so many fish here. But for such a long time we couldn't fish it because it was just so overgrown. We had to stumble out over there and try and cast up by the willows. Even these willows down here, I've pruned a lot of overhanging branches down there which are actually right in the river. But now, to repay my three or four hours of work, of clearing this spot again so we can fish here again, I'm rewarded with a beauty. Oh, Rikey. No, oh, he's away. Oh my god, that just about snapped that rod tip in those stones. This is a determined fish. He was done. He is leaping back out into the water. This is one determined trout, and I almost lost my rod then. Big ten and a half foot monstrosity. Zoomed in. Come on, fish. There he goes. Oh, that is a beautiful fish. Man, that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. It's a slightly different looking one. It's um, only a few little spots. Yeah, he hasn't got nearly as many spots. He's got a plain looking fish, beautiful fish, just these little flecks. He's good four pounds. Oh, he sucked that right down there. Goodness, that's going to be an operation. Oh, he's got some teeth. Barbless hook though, that's out, here we go, some oxygen, but that is a beautiful solid fish, the shad marks, so nice to catch a fish here again, there he goes, oh that was splendid, Fish just in there. Yeah, this is a great spot. When the river is a little bit higher, the fish will be sitting around in here. There's a nice little hole there. And um, yeah, sometimes you hook several, two or three out of this little spot. But we were just coming back downstream at the end of the day. Thought about having a fish in here on our way up, but I thought, no, we'll get up and had our objective upstream, so we got up to that. And um, coming back, I sort of thought I could see a bit of a shape in there. Sure enough, this fish just rose beautifully. I thought, wow, we've got to have a go at him. But finally, after, after pruning all of this, coming back and fishing, we finally got some success. He just, that fly just landed on the water there. Drifted about a foot and 
I hope the uh, camera picked that up all good. Oh well. Actually, we'll just, while we're here, we'll actually just have a look under, under these rocks. Let's see what we've got. Have a look under this, eh? Right? That is one big rock. Colobariscus. See all of these, um, oh, there's more collies. There's two, three, four. Oh, there's plenty down under there, too. There's a lot of colobariscus down in there. See those guys? All these horny case caddis. Here's a little dalatidium. But the majority is these colobariscus nymphs. And there'll be a lot down on the floor there too, I guess. Yep, there's a big one. Oh, there's another one there. And a big one there. Yeah, they're all on the bottom too. They're not just stuck to the rock. Oh yeah, I can see them down there. They're, actually, they're everywhere actually. There's dozens of big colobariscus. It's good to see. Oh, a bit better we might get more oh, colobariscus. Oh yes, look at that. Oh. Most of the nymphs actually fall off when you lift the rock up, but as you can see, look at those. Oh, they're in a big gaggle. Caddis grubs, there's more collies. And as you see, these guys, they just sit there under the rock with the current flowing through, and um, they just sit there like that, just like a group of mussels, if you like. And they're not grazing on here like these little dalatidium nymphs. They don't eat the algae. They just sift through their hairy legs and their hairy bodies. They sift the um, organisms out of the water. And uh, just like a mussel will sit there and filter stuff because they're, they're called filter feeding mayfly nymphs. And they just sit there in one spot just where the current's all good and they filter away at all of the um, plankton and plant debris, algae which is flowing down in the, in the water column and they, um, they filter it out just like a group of mussels and if there's enough feed coming down in that water and the water's stable and just staying in a nice stable flow like it is in the Arnold coming out of the lake um, there can be just any amount of these filter feeding mayfly nymphs just sitting under these rocks, filtering away, growing bigger and fatter until the day comes when they hatch, around about this time of year. Oh yeah, there's heaps under there too. And for the likes of Trust Power experts to say that this river is really no different than any other average river on the west coast is just such a blatant lie. You can't go to any other river on the coast, lift up a rock and see all of these filter feeding mayfly nymphs. You just can't do that. It's just not there. The Arnold is very unique. <laughs> If this situation, if it did actually occur in another river um, through some freak of nature, some weather pattern, some freak weather pattern where there were stable flows for a long period of time, um, and if you did get this in another river, it wouldn't last very long because the big floods would come down eventually and, and all of these rocks would be moving off down the river under five or six meters of heavy flood water and all the ecology here would be just lost. We'd be back to square one. It's worth noting that most of these colobariscus um, nymphs in the river at present, most of them are, have hatched, so they're not actually present in the river. Most of them are actually spinners now out in the surrounding 
countryside like we saw this morning on their way up earlier on before the, the wind came up there was just countless numbers of colobariska spinners which is the mayfly because these nymphs hatch into a dun and then the dun will fly flutter off into the bushes and overnight it'll shed its skin or hatch if you like a second time and it turns into a spinner which is that lovely glassy wing thing we saw earlier on and all of his friends who are swarming over the top of the trees they're a spinner and they they mate fertilize their eggs and the females come down dip on the water and release their little cargo of little cluster of orange eggs which the eggs come down into the riverbed and start off um, the next year's so it's not actually the best time of year to actually be looking at the numbers of colobrissus because most of them really have hatched but i just love ever since i was a kid i just love looking under these boulders and oh my god would you look at that it is just a smorgasbord. Look at these colobariscus there. You see those guys? Blend into the rock. And just to think that the majority of them have probably just floated off downstream as they let go, as their rock gets disturbed. These eggs, all of these horny case caddis here, clusters, they're actually cemented onto the rock so they will actually be turning in they'll be pupating inside these cases so they'll end up coming out and turning into um, caddis flies but look at these big colobariscus nymphs absolutely fantastic it's just a masterpiece of ecology there that you just simply don't find in other rivers on the coast even at the, for New Zealand standards that's quite phenomenal that much ecology on this grand scale this big scale where there's just meters and meters, 40 meters of this right across there and for miles and miles 13 kilometers upstream there of this incredible ecology it's just amazing you really would have thought that New Zealand and New Zealanders would have valued this a little bit more highly